Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to be looking at uh, a kind of career overview of Barry Windsor Smith's X-Men work from the earliest days to much later. But first, Jimmy, what do you have? I have patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where I serialize uh, a comparison between two Street Angel comics that are the same story, but I drew them two different times, uh, about three years apart, and 200 pages of Street Angel comics between these two. Uh, so it's basically comparing how I change as a cartoonist and creative choices that I make. Some stuff stays the same, uh, some stuff totally different. Uh, I do lots of this stuff on Patreon, original art process, talk shop. I also post my out-of-print zines and mini-comics there. So join me on patreon.com slash jimrug. You can download these out-of-print, hard-to-find mini-comics and zines. You can see how I make comics, and you can see lots of my artwork. Red Room Issue 1, hitting the stands May 2021. Kayfabers, you guys gave me a hit comic, and I can't thank you enough. The first issue is going to hit the stands in May. Why not start uh, putting the word out? For Red Room Issue number 2, going to be coming out in June. It's a monthly comic, Jim, so get it put on your pull list. Uh, Pre-order it from Fantagraphics. Uh, If you don't have a reliable comic shop in town, uh, every story, every issue is completely self-contained, so if you... If you miss uh, issue number one, you could pick up uh, any issue. A jumping have... on point. Yes. Every comic is somebody's first comic. The Jim Shooter Maxim. <laughs> a lot of Jim Shooter in your red room. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I thought uh, what we're doing is celebrating, uh, this week we're celebrating the release of Barry Windsor Smith's Monsters uh, graphic novel, a comic that was uh, 25, 30 years in the making started off as a, a, a kind of incredible Hulk origin story and turned into something much, much more. Went through a few potential publishers, Vertigo, uh, Dark Horse, ended up at the publisher of the world's greatest com- cartoonists, Fantagraphics Books, publisher of Red Room. And uh, we gave the overview for the book. Let's take a look at some classic Barry Smith work to see how we arrived at this place of this uh, this masterpiece. And a very prominent X-Men artist. So we're going to take a look at two pieces. We're going to take a look at X-Men 53 from 1969, February. And then we'll take a look at uh, X-Men 205 from 1986, that that fateful year. We'll compare and contrast and have have some fun along the way, Jimmy. We're going to use the essential to do this because I don't have uh, the (laughs) the original. It's about looking at Barry Windsor Smith's uh, penmanship anyhow. Uh, And we're going to... Go back to a time before the Windsor was even part of the equation, Jimmy, when he was... This is like the classic stuff that you hear hear about in the old interviews. When he comes to America and is like getting his first job, his first opportunities, and uh, the word on the street was, he drew this shit here on New York City park benches, man. Central Park. That's the kayfabe. (laughs) Yes. Good use of kayfabe. Uh, First thing you see is the Kirby. Totally. Which... You know, a generation of cartoonists kind of came into Marvel with that kind of, I don't know if it was instructed or not, but came in bearing that Kirby storytelling style. And man, as an artist, had to be a huge influence. You know, I'm, I'm sure that that's what spoke to a lot of these aspiring artists at the time. And you, you see it on display in Smith's early work. Yeah, but then there's enough weird finicky stuff uh, outside of that that still feel, it feels like fanzine or orc or something there. It is interesting to think, like, we've dissected Kirby to this point where there are books on how he draws and foreshortens and all of his Kirby-isms. Back then it would have been like, I looked at a few of his comics, they were amazing. Uh, let's see why, how, how he's doing that, how he's creating movement. And uh, it's funny to see these artists interpreting that in their own ways. All right. Big four-panel sequences, gutters for a part. You could see that uh, he probably, this page might have been drawn on that uh, park bench, man, because... Does wasn't sitting there with a T square. Great action though, you know, as you go through that big center page, characters all uh, it angles. There's there's a lot of that dynamic quality in these early pages. <laughs> Look at that right <laughs> there. Blastar is our guy. <laughs> Probably Marvel method. Like, look at these guys. You never see gutters this wide. Did they do that in Britain? Yeah, that's different. And inconsistent from page to page. Right. And from tier to tier. That's what I'm saying. That four panel pages, I feel like that's something that comes on much more later. Uh, Interesting to see it here a few times. Right. 
and the big bulky fists, you know, certain, certain Kirby tropes that are unmistakable. You know, the function of the big gutters too, if this was a deadline job, that's just like a little less drawn that has to be done. <laughs> I think that saves some, <laughs> some time. I really do. I've, I've noticed that in my own pages when I make a, the gutters uh, bigger than I used to. Makes me wonder if these were drawn too up. I don't know what, what date they changed that. Right. Um, it might have been a little bit earlier. but Yeah, that's so different looking at this stuff. Like, look at how thick these lines are. Yeah. It's so different than, uh, well, than what we're going to see, you know, 20 years later with his work. Oh, ready to jump in? Yeah, man, pull it out. Let's get some Lady Deathstrike gimmicks <laughs> in here. We're going to look through the black and white uh, afterward if we have some time because, man... If Barry Windsor Smith wasn't coloring this thing, we'd have to call him a masochist. <laughs> or I guess saddest. Yeah, be saddest. It. He'd be putting it on the colorist. Yes, yes, yes. This is a wild comic. This is his third Claremont X-Men issue. And uh, I think it's it's noteworthy because the first one, he is penciling only. Right. Uh, the second one, he's penciling, inking, and coloring, which is what he's doing here. And he gets a story credit here. But the coloring so important. I often say, you know, I went through a huge Barry Windsor Smith fandom in the 90s, and when I tracked down these issues, if you could get him penciling, inking, coloring, if you could get two out of three, that was going to be good Barry Windsor Smith. Right. <laughs> I think that's super well said. Got a little uh, little um, Lady Deathstrike origin gimmick, man, with her reavers. There, there goes the guys that uh, Wolverine jacked up during the Dark Phoenix saga. This this is a good spread to point this out, is how much drawing he does in the coloring stage. Because when we see the black and white, you'll see this is just open. But right. whenever you see here, there's these white highlights that come in, and then when you see the Reaver's face, like, there are so many colors on that face. Look, He's really drawing in the co like on the color plates, I guess. Look at, uh, like, just two green dots for a little bit of light coming off of Spiral's helmet. Yeah, and the highlights that are, uh, you know, shimmering or shining in the hatching. Uh, we were talking about Jim Lee and Scott Williams doing that. Scott Williams chimes in and says it is something that they, they were experimenting with uh, from a Barry Windsor Smith influence early on. When you look through this, you feel the, the uh, influence that Barry Windsor Smith had on Jim Lee, Scott Williams, and, and that generation of future plastic hatchers. It's this stuff where it's like, even in color, it takes you a second. It does. I, I cannot believe that a comic book looks like this. <laughs> right. You know, you think of the think of the first Barry Windsor Smith X-Men we just looked at and how simple that line work is compared to this blizzard in Manhattan. <laughs> right. With Power Pack. Right. How about that? That's a strange choice. One of the toughest kind of views to draw, you know, like, there are a few cartoonists that, that really pull that off. Otomo will do this view and pull it off real well. But you have to, like... It requires actual observational drawing. Mm. Because you rarely draw a character. Like, so, you, like, you have your iconic way to, like, put eyes and nose. Reverse and Look at this shape. And you got to look at something in order to get to that place. It's no front-on view. You look at your... Uh, flip back to that page. You're sharing a studio with your buddies. You look over at him drawing. It's almost the, the cartoonist in drawing pose next to you. Some cartoonists, <laughs> man, they definitely have that severe hunch. We'll both probably have it yeah. uh, eventually. <laughs> As Jimmy just set up really, really straight <laughs> man, to correct his posture. You're scaring me. You're scaring me with the uh, posture talk, Ed. A lot of panels. That's what I'm saying. The density of this is really wild. I wondered how long it took him to do this because... You know, like Art Adams would do his X-Men annual every year for, for a while. And Barry Windsor Smith does like one issue of X-Men each year for a few years. How long does it take him to do this? You know, it's set up as a monthly book, so I don't think he can work too far ahead. And they're always singular stories, so it's not really fitting into continuity continuity in any major way. Like when Storm loses her power, she loses them for a long time. Except this one, you've got to sync up with Christmas. So right. if you blow this deadline, well, maybe next year we'll run it. <laughs> Maybe it'll be an issue of Marvel fanfare. That could be too. But it does feel like more than a month's amount of work on the pages here. Absolutely, I, I don't. I don't think that uh, when when he was when he was cooking, man, 
he was putting in more than uh, everybody else was. That's a mean Lady Death Strike, by the way. She's amazing. I feel like this is what made her. To oh, absolutely, man. These look at these cool colors. Uh, we benefit from having the uh, the orange and brown Wolverine uh, suit and the hot colors of Lady Deathstrike's outfit while we have these cool color backgrounds where the, you know, it's not Roy G. Biv. It's like the G. Biv uh, <laughs> treatment for the backgrounds That's here. That's funny. Really great fighting sequence, too, over these next several pages, these horizontal widescreen, as it became very popular in around 2000. Uh, doing it in 1986 here and doing it damn well. Unforgettable close-up, man. And and we did that Jim Lee X-Men Artist Edition and there was like all that weird hatching on the face and stuff. Has to come from this kind of thing. I think so too. As I got into Barry Windsor Smith, it would have been around that time. You could see, a, I, I feel like you could see a lot of uh, influence. And Barry Windsor Smith, you know, goes and works for Jim Lee for a little bit at Wildstorm on, on one of their big crossovers. Uh, Jim Lee, a publicly you know, has stated that he's a fan of Barry Windsor Smith's work. So I think definitely an influence. Another super hard view to draw the human face. That man. really is tough. Because the, well, what do you do with that mouth? You know, you, you, every time you draw a head, you want to draw a mouth, but that's one of those instances where it's almost not seen. Man, how cyberpunk is this particular story? Absolutely. You know, all her circuitry and wires and stuff everywhere. Looks yeah. amazing. And it's like believable wire. It's like telephone cord, man. He drew wiring really well. Obviously, Weapon X, but I mean, this is, you know, five years before that. So this is him coloring. I was taking a look at, at this stuff here, like when, when they used to have to uh, mm -hmm. put that subscription information in there so that they couldn't kayfabe the numbers. And I think uh, subscriber base, like with mailing list, I think it was like... I see a total number of copies printed okay subscriber base with the mailing list Twenty eight thousand four hundred ninety one people were on the uncanny x-men subscriber list dude that's a lot of that's a lot of addresses man that's how it you is. that's how you get these video game ads and stuff in there six hundred and fifty two thousand uh print run that's sick and Good it's here for comics and it's 86 man so when those royalties start kicking in after about 50 50 000 copies you're going to make a couple dollars. Maybe you don't have to draw this monthly to get a nice paycheck. Yeah. Got a couple minutes, man? Just just breeze through the black and white for fun? Yeah, absolutely. I put a tweet out a real long time ago whenever I was doing, like, reading this stuff in prep for uh, X-Men Grand Design. And when I got to this, what I would do is just go to the cafe. And instead of bringing issues, like, just bring a, bring a Bible. This one we're going to look at as its own episode because it has... Uh, Hundred like a hundred pages of Art Adams has this. Like, that's a good. It, this that's is, a good one. This is a great one to, to get. Uh, but you can see this open space that I was talking about. How uh, when you look at the comic, it doesn't feel open like that. And there's some drawing in the color. Uh, I guess it'd be on the color guides. Probably is where he's indicating that. Right. But you know, I guess knowing that you're going to color it, you get to do that. You get to leave some room for you to do, you know, whatever the ideas are in the color stage. Works in black and white compositionally, you know, it breaks up the space, you know, lets us see this, this figure, uh, you know, lets, gives us some breathing room. Yeah, these pages very clear uh, in black and white. <laughs> let's, let's see how the blizzard proceeds. Now let's, uh, let's take that breathing room all the way, man. That's a beautiful sequence, man. It makes me think of Mazza Kelly's uh, Born Again yeah, I street agree. sequences and stuff. see a lot of that. Man, once he starts getting in the blizzard, pretty great with the uh, the lighting and the headlights. Jimmy, crack open an issue and, and uh, show me, like, let me see if he uh, colors uh, outside the lines with these uh, snow snowballs, man, with these little snowflakes. Like, that's that's got to be a bitch to cut. Uh, he was he was not taking it easy on those little ladies in Connecticut that were cutting these separations, Jimmy. Yeah, that's tough. I wonder if they're doing uh, if they're if they're inking onto the onto the plates at this point, because I don't know how you could cut stuff like that out. Well, you know what you do—you lay down the the full zip and then just cut out the circle, or hit it with that ink eraser and it just peels the dots off. Man, these pages that have no gutters—they're so so dense. <laughs> Here's our fight sequence. I really like this image. I love the way her claws break the panel. Yeah. Yeah, this look is... at that for a two-page spread. Super okay, strong. Jimmy, color this. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, what are we looking at? Yeah, it's intense. It would be funny to see a colorist do T their Take a stab. 
No pun intended. How long would it even take to color some of these sequences? Just sorting out the, the spaces would be intense. Super fun to look at, man. Yeah, it's cool to see it in black and white. It's nice that that edition exists for that comparison's sake, but these, uh, these single issues of X-Men that he does, they were great whenever I would find these. And, you know, I probably paid a dollar for it, you know, found them at that point. But just really standout issues, you know, you're, you're, you're digging through those back issue bins and looking for like an X-Men issue that stands on its own. He's got several of them. Look at this, man. Young, young Jimmy, young Eddie, man. We ain't faking the funk. These shits came from Rite Aid. Well, I don't know where yours came <laughs> yeah. from. But mine definitely came, from, came some, from some long box somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Good to go? I am. Shouts to uh, Barry Windsor Smith on the completion of his new masterpiece, Monsters. Uh, we're going to get out of here and go work on our own masterpieces. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Patreon.com slash Jim Rug, where you can download my hard to find out of print zines and mini comics. You can see lots of how I make comics, my original art, black and white and color. And uh, you can get all of that and more at patreon.com slash Jim Rug. Red Room issue one is going to hit the streets in a matter of weeks at this point. We're about to hit that print button, man, to make the books happen. Uh, get it put on your pull list. Issue two is going to be coming out in uh, June. We're going to be taking pre-orders uh, right now. We've been taking pre-orders for, for uh, a little while on that. Hit my link tree in the description below. You'll be able to get uh, to the Fanta website to, to put in those pre-orders. You can also hit up my Patreon uh, to read the comics ahead of time. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on and coming out. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give him one less set of marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more Barry Windsor Smith comics.